Hi guys, welcome back and it is the start of the weekend, yay! So I've got lots of stories in this one for you, obviously we've got the big main one, but I'd like to start off the video because I've had so many requests and that is some photographs of Leela and Shia. Now Leela and Shia are very different dogs, Leela starts off her morning, all she cares about is where is my breakfast and I want to go outside. Chia. Chia is the weirdo. She's a complete weirdo. Yes, she's cute. Yes, she's adorable, but she is definitely broken. Um, I don't mind having a defective dog. It adds to the personality, but she is definitely a strange one. So now you've had a little dose of my crazy girls and let's get on to the first royal story of the video. And we're going to start with something super funny. That is Harry's book has broken records yet again for the most dumped book at holiday destinations. Hotels, um, poolside areas, beaches, they are literally being left with the books because, you know, the books did sell initially in the beginning. There were lots of copies. It was supposed to be one of the fastest selling books. And that was because everyone was rubbernecking. It's what happens when you drive past a traffic accident. You realise there's not much of an accident. Why have I just been in a tailback for five miles? And that's because everyone's driving going, slows down. And that is exactly what happened with Harry's book. Everyone wanted to, to know what was going on, but obviously we were inundated with interview after interview, article after article. And by the time people actually got the copies of their books, we knew everything anyway. And most of it turned out to be waffle and some just complete made up stuff that more people were coming out saying, well, this didn't happen. This wasn't true. It read a little bit like the truth and the facts side of it as Finding Freedom or their Oprah TV show. Now, more stories have come out about how Meghan should have been more hands-on, Meghan should have been more involved and to stop Harry from revealing as many embarrassing details as he did. This is just gaslighting. If anyone thinks that Meghan wasn't involved in it, I've got a um, toasted ice to sell you, honestly, because she has involvement with every decision that Harry's made. She's been the worm in his ear. Every decision he's done to make her happy. And she would have been telling him, put this in the book, put this in the book. There's nothing that wouldn't have gone past her for approval. It's only because the book has been received negatively that Meghan's going nothing to do with me and she's probably gaslighting Harry as well saying I tried to tell you I tried to warn you this is all on you all this unhappiness that I'm feeling now it's you it's your fault because that's what narcissists do in some more news, the socialite news on the ground in Montecito is that Harry and Meghan have been barred from several private members clubs. Maybe that's because they keep taking dial pap with them. When people go to these exclusive places, you know, with rich, famous politicians, they want to be left alone. They do not want paparazzi there. Now, of course, paparazzi, they do stalk around certain places to catch a celebrity. But this every time with Harry and Meghan, we know that they are dial pap happy. We know at the San Vicente bungalows, they drove three hours to be there. It's like they knew exactly when Harry and Meghan were arriving, jumped out and got all the pictures. But unfortunately, lots of people that do appreciate their privacy, they were caught up in the photographs. So all these photographs that are being released to magazine and online media groups and newspapers, you've got people coming in and out the restaurant. So apparently they are being frowned upon and being shunned because, well, discretion, privacy, it's not really their thing. Which brings me around to the next big huge story and that is the title of this video. A fast one is this story. If it was anyone else you wouldn't believe it to be true. You'd say no I, I'm calling bollocks on this story but this story has been broken by dailymail.com. They've had it confirmed by officials in the US and the UK government that when Harry and Meghan attended the Queen's funeral they got their staff to contact the White House to ask if they could catch a lift with the President and the First Lady on Air Force One. It's incredible, isn't it, to have the, the, the gall, the brass neck, to even request anything like that from the president. I mean, this isn't just like their friends, can we borrow your, your private jet? Can we borrow your yacht to go away for the weekend? This is Air Force One. I mean, it's laughable in itself, the fact that Harry and Meghan can't keep anything to themselves. They've sold every personal conversation, every private detail to do with where they lived, who gave them what, when they joined the royal family. They show absolutely no discretion over anything. 
So the fact that these two think that they would even get security clearance to get onto Air Force One, it's, it's truly mind-blowing. They are completely delusional. I know that they convince themselves that they're global leaders of something, but they're not leaders of anything. They are civilians. They chose a private life. They gave up because they couldn't deal with the stress of following protocols, being a public servant, but they expect to still be treated like they are diplomats, they are internationally protected people. I mean, who did they think was going to pay for their little jaunt on Air Force One? The president is paid for by the US taxpayers. They're not going to be paying for Harry and Meghan, which all would have been about Meghan's photo op. That's all it was about. Can you imagine Meghan? She'd be convincing Jill... Jill, I think it's more important that I get on the plane first. You know, I'll be the one that goes up first just because we're your guests. And I think it would look better, you know, optics wise, if you're the last person to get on to wave, because, you know, that signifies the plane's about to leave and you are the first lady, you know, completely baffle them with bullshit. This is Meghan's dream. We know Meghan has had political aspirations for a long, long time from the moment that she employed Sarah Latham, who was one of the top advisors to Hillary Clinton. That was when they were still part of the royal family. I mean, Meghan has been sniffing around the Obamas for as long as possible to the point they started cutting her off <laughs> their same social circles. It was quite a big thing that she was not invited to the Obamas big birthday celebration. You know, she has lots of things that she was doing that was copying. She was using them as a framework to build up herself. Megan is like a little girl with dress up boxes and she uses other people to go, oh, I'm going to be a princess today. I'm going to be this today. She's got no, I don't think she's got any real depth to who she is as a person. She's always trying to be someone else. But as for Megan's political aspirations, yes, she, she's been having lunch and phone calls with Gavin Newsom, the Democrat governor of California. She wrote to Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House. She cold called senators and even asked certain senators to have telephone numbers of others all the while still calling herself and introducing herself as the Duchess of Sussex. And it was all to do with Meghan trying to build herself up to be a political candidate. That's why she was sucking up to Gavin Newsom. They went to New York and met with Mayor Bill de Blasio at the time. She went and met people to talk about, you know, getting involved with the UN. It was all political, all of the things that they did. They've hired several members of staff, not just the bodyguard that used to protect Obama, but they also employed Miranda Barbot. She was a massive part part of Barack Obama's re-election campaign. Then you had Katie McCormick. She was the spokesperson for Michelle Obama. Meghan has been poaching staff and trying to get all of these Democratic staff people around her. Now, obviously, the Obamas are not stupid. And Michelle, after the attacks on the royal family and the fact that they continuously attack their families, they distanced themselves. Not that I think that they were ever particularly close, but they did have a fondness, I believe, for Prince Harry. But Meghan is a social climber and she overplays her hand. So I think as soon as that door went up, she's like, right, I'm going to try Jill next because Jill was actually quite friendly with Harry. She loved the Invictus Games. She's the mother of a veteran herself. And there's lots of things that she has done to support veterans. Now, again, I know some of you guys get really upset when I talk about I'm not talking about American politics. I'm talking about the people in question. But obviously, Harry has been friendly with her. And this is when that they have started sucking up to them more. Harry invited Jill to attend the most recent Invictus Games, which was last year at The Hague. Jill turned it down because it didn't look good, bearing in mind that Harry and Meghan have done nothing but attack the monarchy, the UK. They have stirred up issues with racism with their allegations, even across some of the Commonwealth countries. Harry and Meghan have become a diplomatic problem. Now, speaking of Meghan overplaying her hand, well, you know, the whole love bombing thing that she likes to do to show that, you know, that she's such a sweet and kind person, she goes over the top. Well, sucking up to Jill Biden, well, she thought, oh, this is this is one of the weirdest stories. But what happened was, and I'm cringing already, Meghan wore this lemon dress, an Oscar de la Renta dress, when she did the Spotify advertisement where Harry was sitting on the sofa looking like a depressed man that was being held captive. He didn't look particularly well. But Meghan, with lots of extra hair, was sitting there in this lemon dress talking about the exciting deal that they were going to produce with Spotify. Ha ha. But just about a month later, Jill Biden on International Women's Day, which just happened to be a day after Harry and Meghan Teller with Oprah, wore a very similar 
Oscar de la Renta dress because, you know, it had just come out. But social media saw this as Jill Biden showing her support for Meghan because she wore the same lemon dress. Now that you could laugh off, it's social media, it's full of idiots. But <laughs> the fact is Meghan thought so as well, so much so that she sent Jill a basket of lemons to say thank you. Now, as you can imagine, the memes have been going wild with this, as they should. But could you just imagine being Jill Biden, getting a basket of lemons of all things, and a nice little calligraphy note babbling on about, you know, female empowerment sticking together and support, and being like, what the hell is this all about? You know, all because she wore a lemon dress. Megan sending her a little calligraphy wink emoji. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. What? A basket full of lemons. It's uh, just honestly secondhand embarrassment at its finest. But going back to this absolutely outrageous request to just jump on Air Force One, it's truly, honestly, mind-blowing with these two. It's, I don't think that they can be well to think that this sort of thing would, would be okay. Megan's, you know, she's bragged about how intelligent she is. She's got that degree, international relations, that neither of them could see that this would look bad. Thankfully, the White House didn't even contemplate it and they shot it down. But at the end of the day, they were there attending the funeral of the UK's head of state, Queen Elizabeth. America and the UK are allies. Harry and Meghan have, in effect, they have become traitors to the crown. They were traitors to the Queen and to the UK with all of their allegations, which turned out to be lies. They've done nothing but try and bring down the monarchy. This isn't just a family argument. This has been a continuous attack for a couple of years. Much less on top of that, it was actually Harry's grandmother's funeral. So the fact that it's completely, as I said, delusional and arrogant and tone deaf to just say, hey, it might upset my dad, but can we uh, hitch a ride with you? Choosing the Queen's funeral to try and get a freebie and to network with the US president, it's cold as ice and it's everything we've come to expect from this couple but after everything these two put the queen through in her final years and even into the month before she died they think that they're just going to saunter home on air force one on the taxpayer's dime i mean air force one is historical it's monumental it's iconic for america you know air force one that saw lyndon johnson sworn in as president after the kennedy assassination this is air force one that saw president bush at the worst moment Moment, in one of the worst moments in US history, he was taken up to prepare a response after the September 11th attacks. And yet here these two were contacting the White House to see if they could jump on it like it was sharing an Uber with friends after a night out. It's not just delusional, it's insane. Now, in another story that's come out, reports are that Megan's new company that she signed with the talent agency are really struggling to find her work. And it's hardly surprising. Who in their right mind wants to employ someone that is known for being a toxic, family-destroying narcissist who continuously lies? She's lied to the courts. She's lied, no doubt, to the royal family. She's lied to the public. I mean, the amount of lies that Meghan has told she's been caught out on. She is the queen of misinformation. On top of that, you've got the fact that Meghan speaks about women's empowerment all the time, but bullies all of her female staff. She has lost so many members of female female staff ever since she joined the royal family she has got a reputation for being an awful woman to work for she's lied on tv she's stirred up racism all for the sake of playing a victim Meghan Markle is one of the most toxic women to have ever existed on a platform. Not just that, but the fan base that comes with her also adds to that toxicity. I'm not surprised these two have been fighting at home and have been blaming each other and they've got a trial separation. I can only imagine the reason why Meghan sent Jill Biden a basket of lemons is because they don't need them, because they're bitter enough between them. Can you imagine the epic fights and tantrums that are being thrown in that house if they are in fact still living together? So it came as no great surprise to many people that when this story came out, most of us were like, is that you, Harry? <laughs> so on that note, guys, don't forget, I will be drawing the five prize winners on Monday to do with the competition that was at the end of the last video. You have until Monday to give it a guess yourself. Even if you can't work it out, just throw a few numbers in there. You never know, you might get lucky. So have a wonderful weekend, guys, and I will see you soon. Take care for now. Bye.